If you enjoy this video, please remember to subscribe if you haven't already. And if you like what you see on my channel and would like to support me on Patreon, click on the link below. Jason of Star Command. In my previous video, I talked about the children's science fiction show, Space Academy. After this show's success, a spin-off series called Jason of Star Command was announced by Filmation producer Lou Scheimer. The show would run between 1978 and 1981. The series would follow the adventures of Jason and his team, which included Professor E.J. Parsifoot and the cute robot, Wiki. Jason was a part of Space Command, which was situated on the same asteroid where Space Academy was. Throughout the series, Jason and his team would mainly fight the evil one-eyed space lord, Dragoth. Jonathan Harris was originally going to return to play Commander Gampu on Jason of Star Command. In an interview, Harris related that while the stories about his demand for higher pay is not wrong, this is also not right. According to Harris, Filmation planned to film the series like an old movie serial, with each show running about 15 minutes, which was shorter than Space Academy, which was a 30 minute show. Harris was asked to return to his role for half the money he was paid on Space Academy. Harris refused to take a pay cut, and James Doohan was brought in as a replacement character named Commander Carnivan. This would lead Harris to have a major falling out with producers of the show, especially with Lou Scheimer. James Doohan would only star in Jason of Star Command for one season. After the series was renewed for a second season, Doohan was already filming Star Trek The Motion Picture, where he would reprise his famous character, Montgomery Scott. Doohan was no longer available for the second season, so the character was replaced by the new character, the blue-skinned Commander Stone played by John Russell. Actor Craig Littler would take on the role of Jason, which I would describe as a clean-cut version of Han Solo. He was mainly an unknown actor, appearing in a number of TV roles, the animated show Tarzan of the Super 7, and starred in an unsold television series called Code 3, a medical show in 1972. He was seen in a commercial uttering the famous line, Pardon me, would you have any grey poupon? But of course, Grey Poupon, one of life's finer pleasures. Sid Haig would play Drago. Haig was a well-known character actor appearing in a number of exploitation films such as Coffee and Foxy Brown. He also worked on a number of Roger Corman productions. He has appeared on a record number of 350 television shows. He appeared in the George Lucas film THX 1138 in 1971 and in the James Bond film Diamonds Are Forever. Haig, after his role of Drago, started to get sick of being typecast as the villain and retired for a while in 1992. Originally, the role of Dragos was offered to actor Ted Cassidy, who was best known as Lurch in the 60s show The Addams Family. But because he was working on a couple of other pilot movies, he was not able to give the producers a direct answer. When he finally got back to them, it was too late. Sid Haig got the role. Charlie Dell appeared in the first and second season episodes as Professor E.J. Parsifoot. Susan Pratt would play Captain Nicole DeVito. Susan uh, was, I, I, I think she actually went by Susan O'Hanlon in the show, um, but that was her stage name, was Susan Pratt. Susan was great. She was very uh, uh, darling, a uh, little girl. I mean, she was just, she was small, you know, just darling, uh, really sweet, good little actress. Tamara Dobson would appear in the second season as Samantha, Dobson appeared in the cult 1973 film Cleopatra Jones. Tamara Dobson uh, was, and you know, is, uh, I should say, a, a striking, striking woman. She is uh, well over six feet tall, so we were almost eye to eye, and um, very exotic looking, and just she was a clown she would cut up she would have a great time she'd pull little tricks and stuff and and it was just always a pleasure to, to be around her james Doohan played commander carnivan during the first season and actor john russell would replace Doohan to play the blue-skinned commander stone 
John Russell took over for Jimmy Doohan uh, in the second season, and by that time we had gone intergalactic, if you will. And so he was obviously from a planet other than Earth because he was blue and never complained about having to get into the chair and go blue every day. And While the show was very camp and cheesy, Jason of Star Command featured some amazing stop motion effects and model work. Jason of Star Command was a breakthrough on TV, especially with the visual effects. And the effects team were now able to do swooping Star Wars style shots against a moving Starfield backdrop. For the special effects, Chuck Kaminsky was brought in as visual effects supervisor again. After supervising the visual effects on Space Academy, the visual effects crew used the same models of Space Academy. And I was hired again to come back in and supervise visual effects, only things were a bit different this time. On Jason, the, my work responsibilities were much more administrative. The thing that was good was they had hired a couple of director of photographies and we had some new technology in the form of microcomputers so that we could do repeat moves on spaceships. We could generate in-camera mats so that we could, so that the spaceships could move and the star fields could move. We'd be able to do swooping Star Wars inspired camera moves. The laser beam light that was projected from Dragos eyepiece wasn't a visual effect. It was in fact triggered by a switch that actor Sid Haig held in his hand. The ships featured in Jason of Star Command was Jason's ship, the Starfire, that had a star pod that could separate from the ship in an emergency. Dragos commanded the Dragon ship, which was similar to Space Academy, which had their base on a large asteroid. Dragos's fighter crafts were unmanned drones. This was a choice made by the series producers so that the destruction of these spacecraft would not involve killing the pilot and Jason would never carry a gun due to the show being a G-rated Saturday morning kids show. The violence had to be kept to a minimum. Jason of Star Command seemed to get a lot of influence from the 1930s serial Flash Gordon in the first season with its 15 minute chapters there were 16 chapters in the first season. The show was actually a segment from Filmation's animated show, Tarzan and the Super 7. During the second season, it was decided to turn the show into a full 30 minute episode. The Seeker Shuttle was piloted by Lieutenant Matt Prentice, a character from Space Academy. Actor John Berwick would reprise the role. The robot, Pipo from Space Academy, would return also. Other than those two characters, there were never references made to the show, Space Academy. As a kid, I loved Jason of Star Command. The effects, like Space Academy, are very impressive throughout. The plots were very predictable and cheesy and corny, but this you can forgive, as it's aimed at kids. As a kid, you never really noticed the show's faults. You were mainly watching it for a bit of escapist fun. Though I believe, if you didn't grow up with this show and watched it now, you might not be as forgiving as my generation that grew up with the show. Kids shows today seem to lack the purity that kids shows at that time had. Jason of Star Command was as pure as you could get. My name's Jonathan, thanks for watching.